at the point that I am filming this. I am almost done with book seven of The Wheel of Time, A Crown of Swords. So that's like roughly halfway. I say roughly because the next couple of books are shorter and then towards the end they get way longer. So I will try to remain fairly spoiler free. I might drop some spoilers for the first half of the series, but I don't know how the series ends, so no fear that I will spoil that for you. So the reason that I am filming this video is I literally had the thought a couple weeks ago, why do I like The Wheel of Time still? And I was having that thought because I had had a not as great reading month in June. I had read multiple books that I wasn't that fond of. And then while I was doing household chores and tasks and things, I would put on my audiobook of A Crown of Swords and I was like, ah, this is nice. And then I was like, why is this nice? <laughs> because it is so much easier to point out the faults in The Wheel of Time. The things that are not as good it's easy to make fun of this series. It's easy to say all the things that I think are either not well done or have become like tropes within the series because it's so long, it plays into its own tropes. Some of those things that I don't like being, maybe first and foremost, how the women treat each other. There is such a harsh pecking order, especially in any group of women that has powers anyone who can wield their half of the one power, any society of women is such a strict and harsh pecking order. They are not nice to each other. Even the women who are supposed to be friends, who supposedly like each other, aren't that nice to each other. And I'm like, if I and women I consider friends treated each other the way that these women treat each other, we would not be friends anymore. <laughs> I will say that they are very loyal to each other they have each other's backs, but they get so angry and the way they speak to one another is not very friendly. And then it seems like any woman who is in a position of power or authority feels like she has to assert herself constantly. There's harsh discipline, harsh punishments for novices or any woman who isn't quite as high on the ladder. Also, they're just so long. I am starting to get to what's considered the slog. And I'm sure I'll make more videos about that <laughs> and my thoughts on what's considered the slog. Um, but it just has so much extra. So many scenes that really aren't necessary to the plot. So much description. It's very, very immersive. So on one hand, it's like, there's way too much. This series doesn't need all the clothing descriptions every expression on every character's face. Sometimes the same thing from a different character's point of view. And we see things from a lot of characters' point of view. There's not just a couple main characters, which is part of what makes it longer. And so that immersiveness can really, really slow it down. I'm not even to the official slog yet, but just that feeling of I'm wading through all this extra detail, all this extra description, I'm plodding through at a snail's pace. <laughs> I imagine that that is what the slog is. Just like, wait, we need to see every detail from every character's point of view before the plot can progress. And you know what? Sometimes it feels like Robert Jordan just didn't know when to stop typing. He didn't know when to just take a break or say he was done. And the fact that his wife got Brandon Sanderson to be the one to finish, I haven't gotten to those books yet. Um, but as far as like writing style, she found someone who also doesn't know when to stop typing <laughs> as evidenced by the length of the books once he took over and that immersiveness, the extra details. That is one thing that is both the positive and the negative about this series. It is a series that, at least for me, is taking years, literal years of my life. And I know there's a lot of Wheel of Time fans who have been reading this series since the first book came out, and then as successive books came out, would reread what was already out before reading the next one, and so on and so forth. And so it's been like this lifelong world to have lived part of their literary life in. And even though there's so many little things that I'm not fond of, like every woman's 
bosom must be described in detail. We have to know. <laughs> you can't look at a woman without wondering what her bosom looks like. The romantic relationships. What romance? Some characters fall in love for some reason. I don't even know why they all like each other. Uh, Nynaeve has seemed kind of inconsistent in her characterization. She's gone through a lot. She's changed a lot. She's still the same woman, but from the first several books to book five and then into this one, I feel like maybe Jordan didn't quite know where he was going with her. I'm not a fan of Elida at all. Every chapter with her as the point of view character, I'm like, she makes me want to see justice done. <laughs> but the man knows how to tell a story. He knows how to immerse us in his world and his characters. And I think going forward, I'm going to rely a lot more on the audiobooks. I think that's the way to take in this series, especially through the slog. Just listen to it while I do other stuff in my life. Have this going on in the background and enjoy my time. So I don't know, why do I like it? It's a good story, it's immersive. Seven books in, I'm very attached to the characters. <laughs> and being halfway, I'm looking at the second half of the books and just thinking there is so much still. How can there possibly be so much more? But I also wanna know, I wanna know how it ends. I don't want to know bad enough that I give any permission for spoilers, but I want to know. I want to find out. So for those of you watching this, tell me why you like the Wheel of Time or, I don't know, rant about the stuff you hate about it. As always, thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you. And whatever you're reading right now, happy reading. Bye.